Awesome. Hey, I'm Robbie, uh, UX designer on the platform team. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a few things that uh, the team, uh, Andrew, Matt, and Mick, and myself have been working towards um, an AI subsystem. So um, this image is just of the, the icon, which has fastly risen to be the icon for AI. Um, it's called Sparkles. There's many variations of it just to keep you informed. Um, so basically, uh, we've been working towards um, a subsystem for the AI. Um, and this is kind of our guiding star here is a, just making sure it's a way to provide a consistent um, and user-friendly experience for the users predominantly of Moodle. Um, so they can interact with a AI and still do the things they need to do, teaching, learning, um, admin, um, and then providing a straightforward integration with various AI providers on the back end and keeping the AI principles of Moodle um, front of mind. So just to note um, that when we talk about AI at the moment, um, there's lots of different sort of versions of it and meanings, but what we... Uh, when we say it, we kind of cover them all. So something from like a large language model to machine learning to generative, we are just going to call it AI at the moment, even though you can get more specific about it. Um, but that just helps it when we're having these um, initial conversations, make it a bit more simple for us while we're trying to um, work through these uh, complications that we're trying to make simple. Um, so basically what we're working on is a way to um, make it easier for and consistent um, for people to use various uh, AI services and have a way that's uh, consistent so that when the user is um, experiencing any version of AI in Moodle, it all feels um, like it's coming from a similar place, even though in the back end it may be coming from somewhere else. Um, so basically, uh, this is sort of a list of the key things that we are wanting to look at. You've got the privacy and reporting and legislation, um, making sure that that's really available and adjustable in the admin sort of side of things. Um, and then something that's m probably going to be more specific to how um, AI, the way we're thinking the AI will interact with Moodle is the access control, something like how in Moodle you've got admin permissions, teacher permissions, and student permissions, and how we can make sure that those are still upheld with whatever AI tools that we're using. Um, also something, say, um, inputs for an AI model guardrails is something that we've been uh, working through with, say, a scenario where um, how do we stop a student from uh, asking the AI, what are the answers to all of the quiz that's happening this week? Or um, if the quiz happened, what did everybody get on the quiz? And uh, how, what did this specific person get? So how can we um, make sure that if we're integrating the AI, um, that there is ways that we can restrict and still make it a great learning uh, tool and make sure that we're not um, interfering with the way that people can learn and um, teach as well. Um, and then also making sure that in the future it's extendable, scalable, and that we have the ability to do model training. Um, so through that, uh, this is something that Matt's worked on, but we've all sort of had input together as just sort of a path of the basic uh, parameters and, and flows that we're trying to work with. And basically on the left here, you'd have um, an AI service, and then we have the API that goes to the, the plugins. Then we have the core components, um, and then it gets more into sort of the area that I've been working on on the UX, which is the, uh, the placement. So sort of uh, ways that you can get the user to interact. So we've been looking at stuff with uh, TinyMCE where there's um, various AI plugins already there, but we're trying to see how we can use them better. Um, then a course one where I'll show you a little um, prototype of that 
in a moment and then in the future something like activities where you could have ai grading or you could have um quiz creation or or various things like that so basically we're just trying to create a framework that allows us to um work towards the future but while still um especially with the ai having so many unknowns and moving so rapidly fast um that we want to make sure that it is it is capable of um the ever-changing landscape i guess um so then basically if you want to know more we've got some uh really good information on the confluence um page in the tracker so i think it would be really good if you're interested to have a look there um and then i can i'm about to show you guys i've done a little this is basically what we've been doing is we've been working on what we're calling a rapid prototype so that we can have conversations and um figure out sort of the user journeys of um how this can uh be used and then from there we can kind of focus down on sort of the the, the questions and the answers that we we need um really working on that sort of double diamond um of you know discovery and then refinement and then expanding and refining so that's that's a really important part of what we're trying to to look at at the moment so we're just trying to uh, work fast so that we can get some sort of uh, feedback from just in our small team to try to make sure that we're thinking of the right things and then obviously opening it up and getting more and more input. Um, so I will just share my screen. It's going now. So um, something we've worked on, um, say if you were a student and you had clicked into your course, um and this was a piece of writing that was in the course um you could uh, say you could select um a piece of text um and then a pop-up could appear um and then it could have different functionality that could be um run by the ai in the back end um for this example we're, we're imagining say a student highlighted the text and then uh wanted to translate then that would integrate with say if if this course had used say chat gpt um there would be a communication with that sort of sending the text um and going can you translate this and this is what it comes to one of the main reasons we're looking at this sort of integration is trying to keep people in Moodle instead of jumping away and going backwards and forwards. Um, so this is a very rough sort of sketch idea of how we would imagine that workflow would go. Um, and that it's it, at the moment very simple and rudimentary, but sort of we we believe this is heading in a good direction. Um, and then so that could be a translation version um, and then you maybe there could be one which was um, something like summarize which could be a lot more this could open up to something a bit more involved where um, it would summarize the text um, then maybe there's um, some information about other texts that you've you've asked it about and has a bit of a history um, and then if you wanted to start having a bit of a conversation, um, you could say, click ask more, and then it brings you to more of sort of a large language model version of this interface where now you could start chatting with it. Um, so the idea is that you, you have the modal pop-ups that will give you sort of quick information and then you could move to sort of dive deeper into it. Um, basically, uh yeah this is a very sort of rough uh rapid prototype that we're working on and then we're going to develop it more and more and sort of figure figure things out as we go um that's basically what we've got to show for now um is there any questions i see we have some um coming up on the chat um <laughs> some stuff about accessibility that's something that we're still yeah we are still looking at um and that we as i said that this is just our sort of rapid prototypes and we're still trying to look at how we can 
um, make sure that we're, we're getting that because we feel that that's, yeah, obviously very important. Yeah, Thanks I had much. a comment in there, Robert. I, uh, sorry? Just always, uh, we should always remember everywhere, not just in this project, that we uh, label AI output or, you know, credit AI output wherever it happens. Uh, and that's transparency in the AI principles. So, yeah, just something we should all keep reminding ourselves. And yeah, I think that's that's it's good. That's something I didn't quite mention is how in a lot of, um, say, software at the moment, they're, they're giving the AI some kind of a name um, instead of, uh like giving it some kind of characterization or personalization and that's something we've brought up of how we can make sure that it, it is obvious of what it is um and it's not not kind of hiding the fact that it is the ai yeah and, and just to extend on that a tiny bit part, part of what we've been uh workshopping martin is uh, it goes sort of beyond just letting people know but around that sort of having the auditability so when you go back later um, and you can tell, okay, this part of the content was generated by AI, this part was generated by a human, this part was sort of suggested by an AI and altered by a human, and, and making sure we've got that. And that's sort of really at the heart of some of the stuff that we're doing is like, we want to make it really lightweight to integrate from a developer point of view with an AI backend, and we want to make the, um, the, the display and the UX for it really consistent for the users, regardless of what backend they've got. But then all of that guts that happens in the middle handles all of that sort of stuff. And but it shouldn't. It should be there, but should be transparent in some ways yeah. as well. So sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so you can see it when you if you're interested. Yeah. And no, I, I would maybe even if you're maybe it's a tiny indication if you're even if you're not interested. But so uh, I agree. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Uh, and the other thing was uh, yeah, interesting. You're sort of replicating the standard chatbot interface there in the example and it was just a, a the, the, the thing that we fell into and i'm sorry i'm probably talking for robbie here but all right. what, um is when we started workshopping a lot of the ux on this sort of stuff you very quickly fall into a conversational interface just from the way that you interact with ai and it comes with some of this stuff i know that you've been doing martin around the whole study assistant thing because you some things like translate you just go okay i just want it in spanish and it's a very static thing but once you start getting in the world of summarize this for me or explain it to me very rarely are they like single interactions which we've got the interface if they are single interactions but very quickly you start to want to jump into a conversational interface and that's sort of part of what we've been sort of modeling and prototyping so it's um yeah it's quite cool sorry that's all thanks very much